Welcome to another video session in which we are going to discuss the second part of nervous tissue and nerve impulse transmission. Okay, this is a continuous lesson uh, in continuation with uh, the part one. Okay, friends. You know very well, neuron is the structural and functional unit of nervous tissue. Neuron and neuroglia are there in the nervous tissue, but neuron is carrying out the functions of nervous tissue. Okay. What are the functions of nervous system? It is conduction. It is conducting the information from one place to the other place. It is conducting the electric impulses. For the purpose of conduction, a neuron is specialized. A neuron is specialized for conducting electric impulses or electric signals that are called action potentials and basically a neuron is having some electric current inside, electric potential inside. The electric potential which is there at rest is called a resting potential and the electric potential which is formed at the action that means conduction of a impulse is called action potential. For these two purposes neuron is playing a very very important role. Let us know the structure of a neuron. A neuron is having three very important parts. You just observe this diagram. These are called dendrites, hair-like projections and these hair-like projections are coming out of a very wide area of the neuron called soma. It is also known as cyton. It is also called perikaryon or it is also called cell body. The cell body produces a lot of projections, processes. These processes are branched. They are called dendrites. Dendrites are the areas of reception. They collect the information from different sources. Okay, several dendrites are connected to several parts. So, whichever part gives the information to the neuron, neuron receives the information through dendrites. So, dendrites are called the areas of reception of information. The soma, which is the expanded portion of neuron, is having a nucleus with DNA and all the many of the, uh, what is that called, uh, <coughs> cellular parts are there, cellular organelles are there, cellular, cell organelles are there, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, ribosomes, and then what, uh, mitochondria are there. So, these are all conducting their metabolic reactions to make the neuron generate and conduct a nerve impulse. Okay. So, a neuron does not divide. Cell division is not there for a neuron because the cell dividing structures like uh, centrosomes and centrioles are not there. So, once a damage occurs to a neuron, that damage will be a permanent damage. When a neuron that is controlling our, our hand is uh, damaged, will get the paralysis. That particular function, the particular organ does not perform its function because the neural control is lost. So that's why neurons are having no regeneration capacity. Okay. The soma is having a small, small bulged part. This bulged part is known as axon hillock. And from this axon hillock, the action potential is initiated. And this is called a trigger zone. This is called a trigger zone. And neurons are two types on the basis of the axon and its, its uh, what is that called wrapper structures. Axon may be surrounded by myelin sheath. So, even a my when myelin sheath is present around the axon, such neurons are called myelinated neurons. And in some neurons, there is no myelin sheath. So, such neurons are called non-myelinated neurons. And you see friends, one neuron is either having junctioned with the other neuron with the help of uh, the other neurons dendrite or else a neuron may be having a connection with an effect or structure that may be a gland or that may be a muscle. Okay. So, the junction between the nervous system and the muscle is called neuro myonal junction or neuromuscular junction. This is called neuromuscular junction. So, uh, nerve impulses reach the muscle through this synapse. That synapse is called neuromuscular junction. 
Okay, friends, we have now known the structure of a neuron. So, the, the structure of neuron uh, is uh, a very important uh, knowledge we need to learn about uh, to, to understand its function. That means how it conducts the impulse. Okay, so human body is having 100 million neurons in the earlier lesson we discussed. Out of 100 million, 86 billion are there in the brain only and remaining 14 billion are there in the peripheral nervous system and uh, the total energy what our body receives out of that 25% of energy will go to the brain. Okay. So, around the neurons of central nervous system, there are uh, oligodendrocytes forming the myelin sheath and uh, around the axons of peripheral nervous system, there are Schwann cells. Schwann cells surrounding, surround the axons of peripheral neurons and oligodendroblasts surround the axons of uh, central nervous system neurons. Okay. So, this is the structure of a neuron. Generation and propagation of nerve impulse, if we need to learn about that, the contents of uh, this particular lesson are axoplasm and its composition, axolemma and its channels and how the, the, the ions located inside the axoplasm and outside the extracellular fluid, how are their concentrations? And how the ions moving across axolemma through the channels, what is actually the resting potential and what is an action potential, okay? And what are the properties of nerve impulse? All these things we are going to learn, in, we are going to discuss in this video lesson, okay? So, axoplosm and its contents, axolemma and, it, and their channel and its channels, concentrations of ions, permeability of ions, resting potential, action potential, properties of nerve impulse. These are the headings of today's lesson. Concentrate, right. Resting potential. The resting potential of a neuron is defined as the potential what is recorded inside the axoplasm when the ag axon of the neuron is at rest. When a neuron is at rest, it is not conducting any information when it, when it is at rest. How much potential is existing inside the axoplasm? That potential is called resting potential or resting membrane potential. It is recorded from what is that called minus 40 to minus 90 at an average of minus 70 millivolts. So minus 70 millivolts the negative potential what is recorded inside a resting axon or a neuron is called resting potential. Friends, how is this resting potential established? What are the reasons? What are the conditions that are favoring to establish resting potential in a neuron when the neuron is at rest? We need to learn and let us uh, perform this electrophysiological studies. Okay? Now, in order to understand the occurrence of resting potential in a neuron which is at rest, we need to learn about the axolemma channels, ion concentrations in and out, and differential permeability of ions. This, in, within these three headings, we will get a comprehensive idea of how resting potential can be established in an axon. Let us start. Okay, let us, I uh, will show the diagram what I have drawn <coughs> about the axoplasm uh, in the next slide, but before that, let us have some terminology. Axolemma is the membrane, nothing but the plasma lemma. Axolemma is nothing but the plasma lemma. The plasma lemma around the axon is called the axolemma. The axolemma is very, very special and specific here because it has to make some uh, permeability uh, in and out. The axolemma is having channels and these channels are meant for specific ions. Let me tell you, a channel that is meant for sodium is called sodium channel. The channel 
which is meant for potassium is called potassium channel. Okay, sodium channels allow sodium ions only in and out. Potassium channels will allow the potassium ions only. Okay, so this is the terminology. And let, let us know the other thing also. Some channels do not have any gates, they remain always open. In isolema, some channels are there, they remain always open. Such channels which are always open are called leakage channels. They are called leakage channels. There is no control of movement of ions in these channels because there are no closing and opening gates. They are called leakage channels. Friends, leakage channels are more for potassium. They are more for potassium. So that potassium can come or go. Can come inside or go outside. So their permeability, potassium permeability is more when compared to the sodium permeability because potassium leakage channels are there in an isolema. Sodium leakage channels are very, very rare. Next. There are certain other channels. So, okay, uh, these are leakage channels. Let us know the other channels. Other channels are called voltage gated channels. They are having gates to close and open. Okay, but how these gates are controlled or regulated? The gates opening and closing is regulated by voltage fluctuations. Okay, when voltage is high, when voltage is at threshold level the gates characteristically open or close. So such, such channels which are having voltage gated, voltage gates are called voltage gated channels. Leakage channels, voltage gated channels. Friends, voltage gated channels are more for sodium. So whenever there is more voltage, okay, outside, threshold voltage, the voltage gated channels of sodium will open and sodium will go inside. Okay, otherwise sodium doesn't go inside. Sodium will remain outside. So, voltage gated channels are uh, one kind of variety. Leakage channels, voltage gated channels. The voltage gated channels of sodium having two gates. One is called activation gate, another one is called inactivation gate. A channel is having outer gate, inner gate, activation gate, inactivation gate for sodium. That's why sodium permeability is very much restricted. Whereas the voltage gated channel of potassium is having only one gate. Only activation gate is there, there is no inactivation gate. In this sense also, sodium permeability is restricted, potassium permeability is not very well restricted. Friends, we have learned two types of channels in axolema, leakage channels, voltage gated channels. Let us also see the other variety of channels which are present in synaptic uh, membranes, that is also axolema. Synaptic membrane, uh, that may be post-synaptic, may be a dendritic uh, layer and this is uh, axolema. Anyhow, that is also a layer of a neuron. So, there are two other varieties of uh, channels. One is called ligand gated channel. Ligand or ligand, you can pronounce in any way. The ligand gated or ligand gated channels are controlled by a chemical. When a chemical is kept, it will open. When this chemical is not there, it will close. Such channels, which are regulated by chemical, and they are having certain receptor for those chemicals are called ligand gated channels. Ligand gated channels. Okay. When certain chemicals are introduced, it will open. They are called ligand gated channels. And another variety of channels are also there. They are called they are called signal gated channels. Signal gated channel means a cell from in, inside it will give a signal to the axolema. Then the channel will be opened. Otherwise, if from inside there is no message, the channel will remain closed. Okay, the signal may be in the form of chemicals again. Okay, so here what is very important, the internal control is there. 
friends, there are four types of charas which are situated in the what is it called axolema. Axolema. There are leakage channels are there, uh, voltage gated channels are there, ligand gated channels, and what is that called signal gated channels are there. Let us see these channels in a diagram. Okay. Just I have drawn this diagram from the table academy book and with my own knowledge. Now you see this is a channel. This channel is meant for potassium. Okay. This channel does not have any gates to close or to open. If they remain always open. So this is called a leakage channel for potassium. This is a leakage channel. When potassium is inside, if concentration increases, then it will go outside. When potassium is more outside, then they can diffuse inside. This is called leakage channel. Leakage channels are there more for potassium. Friends, you observe this channel. This channel is meant for sodium. And it has gate. And this gate will remain open when there is certain voltage. Okay? Of course, there are two gates here. I have not drawn that one. I will show that in the later coming uh, slides. So, this, this channel is called voltage gated channel. It will remain always closed. But when voltage is uh, reaching to the threshold, the minimum value that is needed for the opening is called threshold, then the channel will open. When channel gets open, then the movement of uh, sodium occurs. This is called voltage gated channels. Friends, you see the third type of channel here. This is a channel which is remained closed. Why? Because here there is a site. This site is meant for a chemical. When this chemical and come, when this chemical comes and it uh, uh, sits here like this, it will open. So, this channel is called a ligand gated channel. So, leakage channel, Voltage gated channels are for sodium, leakage is for potassium, and ligand gated channels may be there for calcium or for some other material, and they are there in the synaptic region for sodium also. Okay. The next variety of channel is uh, remaining all the time closed, but when intracellular signal comes in the form of a chemical within the cell, then it will open. Okay. So, axolema is regulating the movement of ions in and out in the form of having specific channels. These channels are meant for potassium, sodium and certain other ions. Okay friends, hope you have understood about the channels. Let us see the other uh, very important uh, concepts. This is, this is axon, inside the axon yellow color. And this is outside the axon that is extracellular fluid. Friends, you just observe. In the extracellular fluid, there is more sodium than potassium. Sodium concentration is more outside than inside. Okay? And let's see inside what is there. Inside, if you see inside potassium, more potassium ions are there when compared to outside. Okay, high more potassium concentration concentration is more inside than outside. Sodium concentration is more outside than inside. But friends, remember you may be knowing that both are positive ions. Sodium and potassium are positive ions. Now, if if I want to say one thing, I will say like this: the positive ions are having equal buildup in and out. Positive ions. I am not specifically mentioning whether it's a sodium or a potassium or potassium. But how many how many positive ions are there outside? The same number of positive ions are also there inside. So there is an equal buildup of positive ions in and out. You need to concentrate on this statement. So inside and outside of axon. Equal buildup of positive ions is there. Okay? But outside is positively charged and inside is negatively charged. Axon, outside has positivity, inside has negativity. The inner negativity 
is not due to the positive ions because positive ions inside and outside are same in concentration. Of course, the concentration difference may be there for sodium and potassium, but if you count all the positive ions outside and all inside, same concentration is there. But why inside negativity is existing? This is a very important question. The inner negativity of axon is not because of sodium and potassium. Okay? Inner positivity is because of uh, sodium entrance. But inner negativity is because of some organic acid negatively charged ions which are there inside but not outside. Outside very minimum. Uh, negatively charged ions are there, but inside more negative buildup is there. That is why inner side is always maintained minus 70 millivolts. Friends, in and out of axon, the concentration of ions is different. Inside, potassium is more, outside, sodium is more, but positive buildup is equal. But inside of an axon, negative ions are more having more buildup than outside. That's why inside is negative charge existing. So this is the differential concentration of ions. This is called differential concentration of ions. Let us concentrate on the second aspect that is differential permeability of ions. Okay, as I mentioned in the earlier slide. Potassium is having a leakage channel. That's why you see potassium permeability is more. Potassium permeability is very, very high. But sodium permeability is moderate. Sodium permeability in and out is very less. Of course, only outside arrow I have shown here. But in and out, let us consider. The permeability of sodium ions is very less when compared to that of potassium. So, Two very important catchy points are there to understand the resting potential. One is differential concentration in of ions in and out. The second one is differential permeability of ions in and out. Let us understand this and tell me why there is negativity established. Negativity is established inside not because of uh, outside more more sodium. So negativity is existing inside because of negative ions are there inside. They are called organic acids, amino acids. You can understand it very, very carefully as uh, you see these two diagrams. How is voltage inside recorded? How is the voltage inside recorded? The voltage inside of an axon is recorded with the micro electrodes. These micro electrodes often prepared with uh, silver, silver coated electrodes are there, they are very very small. Okay, one electrode, one electrode is pierced inside the axon, that means if you pierce into the nerve, definitely it will go into the axon. Okay, a nerve is having many axons, if you pierce it, it will go into uh, axon. Now, so one electrode is placed inside the axon and other one is placed outside. Then, Outside is always positive, inside is negative. Okay, the old meter, the old meter will show you the difference of the potential in and out. And this is connected to an oscilloscope, cathode ray oscilloscope, CR oscilloscope, in which you will find the proper recording of the potential. So, when a neuron is at rest, Based with the help of electrodes when potential is recorded, the potential is always recorded at minus 70 millivolts. So, minus 70 millivolts is considered as the resting potential. Okay? Why it is minus 70 millivolts? Okay? Why not it is positive uh, charge? It is only a negative charge. Let us understand. The same what we have understand in the earlier slide. You see this is axon TS, transfer section of axon. Let us see. And inside what is the potential established? Minus 70 millivolts. Why? It is because, you see, 
it is not because of positive in and out so in and out positive are same okay of course sodium are more uh, outside potassium are more inside okay now amino acids are very very high inside these are negatively charged that is why inner negativity is established at minus 70 millivolts so this is difference in the concentration of ions now let us see uh, what is the difference actually let me tell you sodium inside inside sodium only 15 millimoles but outside sodium is 150 millivolts so sodium concentration inside is 10 times less than that of outside let us see the potassium potassium concentration inside is 150 millimoles outside is only 5 millivolts millimoles so potassium inside concentration is 30 times more than that of outside sodium concentration in and out 10 times difference potassium concentration in and out 30 times difference okay and potassium permeability is more very very high but sodium permeability is very very less and in addition to that chloride of course chloride is not uh, uh, permeable and uh, amino acid amino acids are there inside 100 millimoles amino acids outside you see very 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 less it is only 0.2 millimoles 0.2 millimoles so that's why more negative ions are there inside hence more negativity minus 70 millivolts friends you might have understood about the establishment of resting potential it is because of more negative ions inside but positive ions positive ions are two types sodium and potassium and their concentrations are different in and out but as as a whole outer positive ions and the inner positive ions are same let's see so whenever the ions ion concentrations got disturbed so actually sodium must be more concentrated outside potassium must be more concentrated inside more potassium concentration inside more sodium concentration if anything disturbed actually the disturbance is called action potential if anything is disturbed it will be restored by a mechanism okay the ion ionic concentrations are always kept in this constant level by a mechanism and that mechanism is called sodium potassium pump it is called sodium potassium pump this sodium potassium pump is uh, present in the axolemma this is axolemma and this is axon axolemma and this will work by taking energy in the form of ATP in the form of ATP when ATP is given what it will do you see it will pump out sodium ions and pump in potassium ions okay so how many sodium ions are pumped out three sodium ions and how many potassium ions are pumped in only two potassium ions because potassium is having leakage channel so some some potassium will come inside automatically so because of more concentration if it is there outside it will go, go into into the isoplasm so three sodium ions are expelled out two potassium ions are brought inside by an active mechanism that is called sodium potassium pump of course this sodium potassium pump is also there in under regular normal cells also but here there are more in number okay friends you have understood of how action sorry resting potential is established resting potential is established because of uh, difference concentrations and uh, there are the negatively charged amino acid ions now how the resting potential got disturbed if you disturb the resting potential that is called action potential action potential is defined as the, the positive potential what is recorded inside when the nerve is conducting the impulse when nerve is in action neuron is action is in action axon is in action 
what potential is existing inside is called action potential. When a neuron is at rest, what potential is resting potential? When a neuron is in action, what is the action of a neuron conducting the uh, nerve impulse? So, how much potential is existing that is called action potential? And it is around 30 millivolts, positive current, 30 millivolts. Sometimes in some special things, it may be plus 45 also. Okay. Now, an action potential is having, it, it is a wave like, uh, uh, what is that called? It can be recorded in the form of a wave. Resting potential is always uh, uh, stable. But action potential means from negative potential, it has to grow towards positive and it will come back to its normal normal uh, values. That's why it is recorded in the form of a wave. When it is moving in the form of a wave, we can divide the wave into certain blocks. And each block can be analyzed and so that an action potential can be divided into four different regions or three regions actually. One is called depolarization, rising phase. The second one is called repolarization, the falling phase. And the third one is called hyperpolarization, the undershoot. And then there is a refractory period. Let us understand all these stages one by one. Action potential, some, some information is there. It is an electrical phenomenon. So, moment of electricity is there. It is self-propagating. Once it is initiated at one place and it will propagate up to the end. So, initiation occurs only at one place. Okay. And after the initiation, an action potential is generated and it will not remain in the same place. Okay. And it will pass on to the end of the axon. It is self-propagating. Once it is stimulated like a chain reaction, it will go to the tip of the axon. And the action potentials or resting potentials are always recorded by using cathode ray oscilloscope. The speed of the action potential is varying from 10 meters per second to 100 meters or 120 or 125 meters per second. Okay. So, whenever a, nerve, uh, a neuron is stimulated, a small potential difference occurs. The small potential difference is called a graded potential. Okay, the graded potentials, all graded potentials will never become action potentials. Some graded potentials will become action potentials. The localized potentials are called graded potentials. Okay, the, not all depolarizations, not all small small potentials depolarize. Depolarization wave must touch the threshold value. Then only it will be converted into an action potential. So, not all depolarizations can cause an action potential. We will understand all these phenomena in the coming slides. Okay. Uh, for generating action potential, there is a minimum value required. And this minimum value is called a threshold value. If any stimulus touches the threshold value, then only action potential is generated. If any potential or stimulus is less than the threshold value, it is called sub-threshold stimulus. The sub-threshold stimulus cannot generate action potential. Only the threshold stimulus will generate the action potential. Okay? Even if you give supra-threshold stimulus, the action potential is generated in the same amplitude. Amplitude will never be changed. You will you, you understand all this process in all or none principle. Okay. And how is action potential generated? How much uh, potential difference is needed actually? How much, uh, what is the minimum threshold value or how much action, how much potential difference is actually needed? You see, you see 30, uh, what is that called? Uh, 15 millivolts of potential difference is needed. 15 millivolts of potential difference is needed. And to reach the maximum, an action potential needs 30 millivolts. 30 millivolts. Okay. And uh, 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 what is that? No. It reaches the 30 millivolts, but actually it is minus 70 millivolts. 30 
minus 70 together will become 100 millivolts. So, one action potential needs 100 millivolts because minus 70 has to become 0 and from 0 it has to grow to 30. So, minus 70 to 30, so like that. Okay, clear? Minus 70, minus 60, minus 50, minus 40, minus 30, minus 20, minus 10, 0. 70 millivolts is needed to make 0. And after that, 10, 20, 30, 30 is needed. So, 70 millivolts plus 30 mill, 100 millivolts of potential difference is needed. Okay, friends, you see this slide. I have given a small stimulus to NR which is there at a resting potential minus 70. Concentrate here. So, a, a neuron is at rest minus 70 millivolts is there. I have given number 1, a small stimulus. But to generate the action potential, this strength is needed. Minus 55 millivolts is needed. But I have not given minus 55. I have given less than minus 55. Yes, definitely depolarization established. But this depolarization is not making action potential. It is not resulting action potential. Because the stimulus is very small to react. A small stimulus may cause a small depolarization. Okay? I have increased the strength of the stimulus. Again, depolarization is formed, but this depolarization is not causing action potential. Okay? Action potential is not generated even if I, if I increase some strength of the stimulus. Okay. If I increase the strength of the stimulus and if I increase the duration of the stimulus, the duration of depolarization also increased but it cannot cause the production of action potential. Action potential will be, will be produced or generated only when you give the stimulus having the strength of threshold value. Okay? So, in, the, in this case, threshold stimulus can generate action potential. In this case, you see small stimulus cannot generate action potential. Increase the stimulus but not up to the threshold level, no action potential. So, if you give a stimulus touching the threshold value, then action potential is given. And there are some stimuli some chemical substances like that. These chemical stimuli, they cannot create action potential, but they can, they cannot uh, create depolarization, but they can create hyperpolarization. So, so some stimuli are there to create hyperpolarization and some are there to create depolarization. So, when a, when a wave is moving upwards, it is called depolarization and above the threshold value, above the uh, resting value. If any wave is moving down the resting value, that is called hyperpolarization. Friends, this is an action potential. Okay? I have given very less stimulus, having less strength of uh, threshold value. Definitely, depolarization occurred, but it is not resulting action potential. Depolarization occurred, but not action potential. Depolarization occur, but not action potential. But if I have given the stimulus having the having, touching the threshold value, then it is converted in the form of an action potential. This is the wave of action potential. Within a milliseconds, it, it occurs. But if you see the wave of the action potential, it can be understood if we divide this graph into three parts. This is called a rising part. This is called a spike and this is called a falling phase and this is undershoot, this is overshoot, this is undershoot and recovery. Okay? Let us divide. Now, the action potential is divided into certain phases. One is called depolarization. The second one is called repolarization and the third one is called hyperpolarization. Depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization. How does depolarization occur? Depolarization means positivity rising phase inside. How inner part of the axon raises its positivity because it is there at minus 70 millivolts. 
it is possible to raise the positivity when positive ions come inside. Okay. If you give a stimulus having minus 55 threshold strength, sodium channels will open because sodium voltage gated channels will open because sodium is highly concentrated outside tend to diffuse inside. Okay. Because the sodium is diffusing or inflecting inside, influx of sodium occurs inside, inner positivity raises, raises, raises and touches plus 30 or plus 40. Okay? And that is called spike. When inner positivity is increased, when inner positivity is increased, to reduce the positivity, potassium ions will go outside. Potassium channels, voltage gated channels will open. When potassium channels will open, more concentration of potassium is there inside, so potassium will go outside. As the potassium ions are also positive ions and when they are going from inside to outside, inner positivity is reduced. And this phase is called falling phase. Okay? A rising phase, the depolarization. And a falling phase, the repolarization. A rising phase occurs because of sodium influx. Falling repolarization occurs because of potassium outflux. But when potassium gated channels are very lazy channels, they are called lazy channels because they open slowly and they close very slowly. They are closed very slowly, they are opened very slowly. So, when potassium is going outside, when Inner negativity is reached to minus 70. Actually, the potassium gates are to be closed, but they are very lazy to close. So that more potassium escapes. As more positive ions are going outside, the inner negativity does not settle at minus 70, but goes beyond minus 70 to minus 90. This is called undershoot. And this undershoot is called hyperpolarization. Okay? And at this time, the neuron takes some time to recover. So, this is called recovery period. And during this time, what happens? The sodium potassium pump eliminates the inner sodiums to outside, three sodium ions to outside, and uh, with a reciprocation of what is that called two potassium ions inside. So, three positive charges are going outside, two are coming inside. So, one positive difference is there. So likewise, gradually, gradually, uh, resting potential is re-established. Friends, action potential has depolarization, repolarization, hyperpolarization, and recovery. Okay. So what is depolarization? Uh, actually, what is polarization? You see, this is axolema. Axolema is polarized. Membrane is polarized. Inside negativity is there, outside positivity is there. So positive pole, negative pole polarized. The positive pole and negative pole is now changing. Inside is becoming positive now. So this is called depolarization. Depolarization means inside negative, outside. So inside positive, outside negative. Originally polarization. Outside positive, inside negative. Because of sodium influx, depolarization. Because of potassium outflux, repolarization. Okay? Polarization, depolarization, repolarization. But during repolarization, as the potassium gates are very lazy gates to close, more potassium escapes and inside axoplasm, instead of um, stopping at uh, minus 70, it will go further down towards minus 90 and that is called hyperpolarization. Oh, you have understood. Now, the very big question, I will explain all these things in the next plan coming slides also, but you, you just see here. So, uh, let's go to the next slide. You see here. So, this is uh, resting potential, this is rising phase and this is falling phase and this is recovery phase, hyperpolarization. The question is, if, what happens, you see, if I have given minus 55 action potential initiated, okay, and you see this is plus 30, plus 30 is becoming 
plus 20 plus 10 0 0 hmm? and after 0 what comes uh, uh, minus 10 or uh, sorry let me go to back so, okay so it is 30 um, plus 20 plus 10 and then 0 after 0 minus 10 minus 20 minus 30 minus 40 minus 50 minus 55 you see here minus 55 at this minus 55 at this minus 55 stage it will stimulate the sodium ions of uh, forward area to open so that the sodium ions will start its influx in the forward area so that the action potential then appears in that area so when that action potential is in repolarization state it will come to at a certain point it will come to minus 55 then it will open the ion a channel of sodium so that the action potential is gradually moving in the forward direction but not in the backward direction why okay so it is minus 55 this minus 55 voltage is establishing in this particular point which is equal to forward and backward but only the forward gates are opening not the backward gates why the the gates behind the action potential are not opening okay they are not opening because you see here they are not opening this side because this side already the neuron is in action potential stage. Okay. So that's why this period, in this period, no action potential can be generated. Hence, this period is called absolute refractory period. No matter how much strength of the stimulus that you have given above the threshold value, action potential never be generated. Because this is this period is already in repolarization. Okay, that's why uh, it cannot be generated. Now, if you, you know, the uh, forward area sodium channels are ready to get opened. That's why only the forward area sodium channels are open, not in the backward side or behind. So that's why the action potential is always moving in unidirectional from the soma to the tip of the axon. Friends, you just see here. You will understand. You will understand. So the backward area is in hyperpolarization state. Okay. Now, so when sodium is entering inside, actually it is resting potential, and sodium get enters inside. So action potential is generated, reaches up to plus forty, and then potassium will go outside. But the potassium gate is a very lazy gate. Instead of settling at minus seventy, it now went to minus ninety. Okay because it is minus 90 this side here it is then the sodium potassium pump will uh, activate and minus 70 is re-established so the according to this graph you will see the um, what is that called uh, <coughs> respective movements of ions what is this depolarization what is happening sodium is going inside what is this repolarization potassium is going outside and during this period, sodium potassium pump is activating. Now, so this is the moment of sodium, this is the moment of potassium, and here sodium potassium pump is activating. Now you see what happened inside. So here there is positivity. So action potential is there here. This action potential will generate opening of sodium gates in the forward direction, not in the backward direction. Okay. In the backward direction, already there is a, a action potential running here. It is in the refractory period, absolute refractory period. So like that, it will stimulate here. Here the sodium channels will open and sodium will come inside. Action potential is now here. And then here the action potential will occur. So action potential is gradually moving in this direction towards the tip of the axon from the soma. Okay. This is the resting, this is depolarization, this is repolarization, this is hyperpolarization. Friends, the very important concept is there. In all these different phases, what gates are kept open and what are kept closed? Now let us see. So, for easy understanding, uh, I will explain to my students in different way. So, resting potential, 
I will say IOKC. IO means inactivation gate of sodium is open, potassium channel is closed. When I say inactivation gate is open, you have to understand activation gate is closed. Okay, at resting condition, what gates are open? Only the inactivation gate of sodium is open, potassium is closed. And at depolarization, what gates are open? Both open, BO and KC means potassium closed. Activation, activation and inactivation both will open and potassium will be closed. Potassium gates are opened only on that side, repolarization. And during repolarization what happens? Inactivation gate closed. Okay, here diagram is wrong. Okay, it must be closed, this must be open. Inactivation gate is closed and activation gate is, sorry, inactivation gate is closed but potassium gates are open. Both the gates, hyperpolarization, both the gates of sodium are closed, but potassium is opened. Here, uh, actually, inactivation gate is closed. This must be closed and this must be opened. I have not drawn here properly. So, you can change here. So, inactivation gate is closed, activation gate is opened. That is correct. Right. And now you see nerve impulse conduction in non myelinated neurons and myelinated neurons. In non-myelinated neurons, local current will local current flow between the uh, what is that called resting potential and a depolarization state. This is depolarization. This is resting potential. Local currents will generally pass. That means the movement of uh, what is that called action potential is very 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 slow. Okay, but here in myelinated axons, what happens because the opening of channels are very wide. So, it nodes of inter, uh, sorry, what is that called? Nodes of Ranvier, the channels are located. And the next channels are there in the next node only because the intermediate area is totally covered with myelin sheath. So, that what happens? Action potential jumps from one node to another node in this way. So, it is jumping like this. So, this conduction is known as saltatory conduction. And in the saltatory conduction, the movement is very, very fast when we compare the local current. But in some invertebrates, there are giant axons, so that somewhat uh, uh, speed of the action potential can be generated even without non-myelinated neurons. And these are the different phases of action potentials. Action potential has depolarization is the upstream, repolarization is the downstream, and the refractory period is the place where sodium and potassium concentrations are restored. Properties of nerve impulse. Okay, a neuron is always having certain properties. Okay, to generate an action potential, okay, what is needed is plus 55 millivolts is needed. Plus 55 millivolts, if I add to minus 70, it will become minus 55. So, minus 55 is the threshold value. This is the threshold value. If I give a stimulus less than the threshold value, I have shown in the earlier slide, no stimulus, no stimulus, no stimulus, you see, sorry, small stimulus, small stimulus, no response. But when a stimulus of threshold strength is given, it is showing response. When I increase the stimulus value beyond the threshold also, response is same. There is no increased response, response is always same. So, response is either all or nil, all or none, hence the principle is called all or none principle. The second property is non-decremental nature. When the action potential is moving, it is remaining all the time in the same amplitude. It may be 30 or 40. Okay, It may be 30 or if it is 40, if it is always 40. And there is a refractory period too re-establish the resting potential and there is local circuits local circuits and this will self-stimulate themselves to pass gradually from the soma to the tip of the axon and there is saltatory conduction you know very well saltatory conduction is jumping uh, through the uh, nodes of Ranvier from the soma to the tip of the axon in that way it is moving very very fast okay the speed of conduction Let's see the nerve impulse travels at a speed minimum 10 milli 
uh, 10 meters per second and a maximum 100 to 120 meters per second. So, speed is dependent on diameter of axon. The greater the diameter of axon, the faster the rate of speed, conduction, rate of conduction. The more the diameter, that means very less resistance is there. More diameter, less resistance is there. So, it will move very fast. In invertebrates, there are very large axons called giant axons. These giant axons conduct the information very, very fast. Okay. Narrow axons are having low resistance. You see a pipe. If a pipe is having more diameter, more water will go. And pipe is having less diameter, less water will go. But here the speed is dependent on resistance. More the diameter, less the resistance will be. Now, giant diagrams are there in arthropods and mollusks, squids, so they can move, move the, uh, increase the speed of uh, conduction. Myelination is very, very important. Myelination means it is covering axon. When axon is covered at regular intervals, nodes are created so that the action potential has to jump from one node to another node. In that way, within three or four steps, it reaches the tip of the axon. So, this myelination is very, very important because if, a, if an axon is myelinated, a myelinated axon with a 20 micrometer diameter is having equal speed to a giant axon. A giant axon. Okay? A giant axon is uh, occupying a lot of space, but a myelinated axon is occupying very less space. So, uh, in within one giant axon space, 2000 myelinated axons can be placed. That is why having myelination increases the efficiency in speed of conduction and also storing the place, storing the place. Okay, if our brain is having this volume, if they are filled with giant axons, only few axons are there, if they are filled with myelinated axons, more axons will be there and more information and more connections are there. Friends, hope you have understood this uh, mechanism of nerve impulse from one place to another place. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.